Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night, about 10, 11 p.m. California time here. December 17, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows, uh, looks like a 1.7 hiding out here on the map somewhere. Also, uh, got some movement stirring up in Northern California as well. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data here uh, across the Northern California area. Just a couple hours ago, I had a uh, very shallow 3.7 earthquake off the plate boundary here. Uh, just off the triple point boundary. More into the Pacific side here where that little ridge is. A little odd movement. Uh, also a 2.3. A little bit further deeper here into the area of the Cascadia subduction zone earlier this afternoon as well. Uh, if you recall, a lot of activity dropped off. Uh, following yesterday's 7.3 uh, earthquake there across the Vanuatu area seems to have uh, adjusted the stress strain out here across the plate boundary but uh, I definitely don't think we're over yet in terms of potential larger scale movement uh, in that area. Let me go check the trimmer map here tonight and see what we have for Cascadia trimmer. Uh, still a little bit kicking up here. There's a little gap here it looks like in time frame from about uh, UTC time of 10, there's about nine hours missing here. So it looks like uh, since things have kicked back up in the trimmer department downstream, that's when we started to see some further escalation here of the earthquake activity, including the 3.7 and the 2.3. So uh, definitely with that being said, I think we're returning back to active conditions out here. We'll have to watch that through the evening. Uh, not a big amount of trimmer, but uh, notice that gap here. Pretty quiet for about nine hours, and then things start to kick back up. And uh, then we see the further escalation of earthquake activity upstream here from the trimmer. So very dynamic area, very uh, uh, sensitive out here as well in terms of the strain uh, that's uh, built up against the, uh, the plate boundary out there. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, Northern California, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet across the area. Uh, for Nevada, still seeing some microquake activity out there, although it looks like it's uh, tapering off there following that 5.8 earthquake. Uh, I think it's been over a week now, right? If I recall, it has. So, uh, zoom in here for total tally. It looks like 415 earthquakes following that 5.8 earthquake back on, or 5.7. Looks like maybe they downgraded it there. I thought it was a 5.8 uh, back on the 9th. So a lot of aftershock sequences there. Things tapering off, though, it looks like uh, for now in the area with only a handful of microquakes uh, recorded today. A couple smaller earthquakes here around the Dunnigan area from late last night, early this morning. The Bay area around Vacaville and whatnot, pretty quiet there across the uh, Bay region. Uh, the San Andreas Fault here, the creeping segment. A couple of smaller microquakes out there, but really nothing of in, any major news. And extreme Southern California here. Well, what you see here is what you get. A little bit of activity above the 2.5 level down south here in the Baja California region. 2.8. Aside from that, uh, generally small microquake movement with really no... Um, no interesting activity. I guess the only ones would be right off here off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. A little 1.1 and a couple smaller quakes here, but no major swarming going on. Just kind of a, uh, looks like a typical day there in terms of earthquake movement across Southern California uh, into the Intermountain West regions here. Uh, some movement earlier this morning <coughs> way down south here around the Jackson, Wyoming area. Uh, let's check out the Yellowstone overview here real quick. See what we have for any uh, interesting activity. It looks like um, looks like the wind may be starting to pick up out here. Uh, the wind, meaning uh, this seismograph station here, showing a little bit of thickness on the graph. I'm just going to double check that real quick for uh, verification. See what we have there. Uh, up around this region, we're going to bring on the wind gusts from the windy map. It looks a little windy up there right now. For the nighttime hours, uh, cold up there as well. So we are getting some gusts up there around the higher peaks and the exposed uh, uh, seismograph stations that you know may be exposed to the elements there, picking up on some of the wind out there in the area. But far as anything of uh, volcanic activity, well, 
it's pretty quiet out there. I'm not seeing any type of earthquake activity. Really nothing of uh, any major or any minor activity at that. Oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma. Still seeing some movement here. Really nothing uh, big. Just a common thing out there now. New Madrid seismic zone. Pretty quiet. The eastern portion of the country quiet as well. Uh, so see what we got here in the last 24 hours in terms of larger scale activity. Of course, yesterday... We're past that 24-hour threshold now, but in the last 24 hours, this 5.6 here is uh, going to be the latest quake and uh, l one of the largest quakes here, in the, at least in the last 24 hours here. Um, 300, wow, 333. 333.1 miles into the Tonga Trench here. Pretty deep earthquake. Uh, looks like um, some activity... Prior to that, right? 1217, yeah, looks like a little bit of movement prior to that. They're a little bit deeper into the region. But this is very common to see the deeper activity here. It just adds further strain across the plate boundary and potentially upstream here across the Tonga Trench, the uh, subduction zone level. Very dynamic area, but this region, oh my gosh, it can see a lot of earthquake activity. Look at this map here. All the darker circles there indicative of deep quakes moderate deep quakes here and then uh, surface adjustment quakes upstream there and that's mainly where a lot of the big time movement takes place here across the uh, tonga trench area but we get big ones downstream as well I mean, that's just a lot of activity all right so the vanuatu area um, a couple aftershocks here looks like things really have died down though in terms of uh uh, the moderate aftershocks, the last one there being reported as a 4.9 noon, my time here. So we're looking at 10 hours ago since they've had uh, an earthquake. New Zealand there taking a little break as well. 4.8 earthquake. Uh, that earthquake here going to be from early this morning underneath the area into the uh, northern end here of the Hikurangi subduction zone. So still kind of keeping an eye on that area. It's been uh, kicking up here a little bit in terms of interesting movement. Got to be prepared. A lot of stuff happening around the uh, earth right now in terms of plate movement. Uh, Philippines area still seeing some activity with a 4.7 outside the Manila region. Fairly deep though. It looks like it may be into the uh, uh, northern edge here of the Philippines Trench. Japan, older earthquake here from this morning, a 4.5. Nothing across the Kuro Kamchatka for now. If we look at the earthquake 3D globe here, shows uh, absence of earthquake activity. I'm sure that's going to fill in here um, soon. Older movement there across the Aleutian Trench as well. Some deep activity being reported into the Alaska area. Let's see what we got up here. It doesn't look like anything big, but a couple deep earthquakes. Uh, 62 miles deep here for a 2.1. And a couple other deep earthquakes in there. Um, mainly, um, uh, actually a lot of microquake activity out there today. But nothing of any noteworthy value for now. Aside from that 4.5 from technically last night. Big Island of Hawaii has been rocking and rolling out here a little bit. Getting a trail of movement off the Big Island here. Stretching up towards the northwest. Got to remember when the Pacific Plate moves here, we move uh, technically over the hot spot area. And uh, it can have adverse effects there on the Big Island and uh, the Hawaii chain. So it looks like uh, maybe some stress uh, being applied out here across that hot spot region at the Pacific Plate level here. Um, nothing big. 2.5 and a 2.6 here throughout the day. A little bit of uh, volcano, well, movement underneath the uh, Kilauea volcano. We don't have any eruption yet, but I think we're getting close here. Let me show you guys uh, the latest information. That was from earlier. Uh, let me refresh this here real quick, see what we have. And these guys here, the USGS uh, Kilauea, or the HVO, I should say, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, is going to start doing daily updates here on this volcano uh, because of the elevated activity that's kicking up so um, 
as we note here, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory will switch from weekly updates to daily updates starting tomorrow, which is Wednesday, December 18th. So, you know, things are things are starting to move. And let's check out some of these graphs here uh, on the deformation data, which shows some magma movement, some displacement going on here in the last couple of days. Um, fairly deep loss, it looks like, of uh, inflation there around the summit area, at least around this station. And where that magma went uh, is questionable. The key to watching that, I, I guess, is going to be the earthquake activity here. Um, and a, a lot of it's more around the Lava Lake area, it looks like. So it looks like things may be filling in within that region. Uh, that tilt meter station, I think, is going to be one of these out here. So uh, loss of magma from this area being more placed underneath this area here of the um, the Lava Lake region where we've seen, uh, you know, a lot of recent eruption activity, basically from 2008 to 2018. Um, our most recent one, our most recent fissure eruption took place down here across the Middle East Rift Zone. Very small fissure opening with some lava um, there at the surface. That was back in September of this year. Very small eruption. Um, but now I think we're going to reposition back over here uh, where all the activity is stirring up. Not 100% certain, but uh, good possibility. Some fluid movement right here. That's magma displacement. Um, and a couple other interesting earthquakes as well. In the last few hours, though, it looks like things have calmed down. But, uh, uh, you know, we've seen this here in the past. The comings and goings of quiet spells and uh, elevated activity ultimately leading up to an eruption here soon. Uh, just uh, got to keep an eye on that. But looks like all indicators here pointing towards a, uh, a return of an eruption there across that lava lake. All right, uh, out and about. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, 5.1 in the Ocean. Handful of quakes here across the area of China and India. Really nothing big. Some movement outside of Turkey as well with a, a newer four-pointer. A couple other smaller quakes there around the Mediterranean. 4.8 in the Great Atlantic Rift boundary out here. And uh, getting a bunch of earthquake activity here across the uh, <coughs> Peru-Chile Trench. Which uh, happens quite often. little section down here is always almost seems like it's always active so some fives latest earthquake there five uh 5.2 some other fours in there uh middle america trench here still active as always as well it's a major subduction zone and aside from that uh definitely got a lot of deep activity here around the crunch zone a lot of uh, these rings here raised off the globe, indicating some deeper movement. So we'll continue to watch that. Take a peek here at the space weather activity, or lack thereof right now. Uh, really not seeing a whole lot of interesting activity. Uh, flaring department there looks fairly minimal. Only a 95% chance for a C flare, X flare at 5. And as you can see here on the, uh, the flaring chart, steady as she goes, I guess. I mean, that's pretty quiet. For solar maximum, nothing major here in the Aurora forecast for now. So we'll continue to watch things, see how everything plays out here in the coming weeks. Nothing major in terms of severe weather coming up. Uh, we do have some uh, wet weather coming out here across California. Uh, in fact, the hazard map here, um, let me bring this up here real quick. There's possibility of some flooding returns, uh, returning here to the west coast. Actually, it uh, looks like the Bay Area, just south of there, across the San Joaquin Valley up into the Sierra Nevada, and that dark green line is underneath a moderate risk for some severe, well, potential flooding. A moderate risk for some heavy rainfall around the 26th to the 27th. So that is uh, interesting there for sure. But the forecast here, 
we look at the six to 10 day forecast, a lot of wet weather there across the Pacific Northwest, California included. Uh, the eight to 10 day, roughly about the same. So let's go ahead and check out the numerical models here, see what we have. Pacific Northwest getting some uh, precipitation right now and snow up there as well. Our next chance of rain here for California comes in, looks like sometime on the day Saturday this weekend with a return of some wet weather, snow in the mountains. And uh, that appears to open up the storm door, so to speak, with uh, some precipitation coming in. That's going to be Christmas Eve right about here. So just, and that's pretty close. That's just next week here for Wednesday. And uh, let's see where that flooding system that they're talking about. I guess that's going to be it. Look at that. Decent precipitation moisture coming in day after uh, Christmas. I didn't say Thanksgiving, did I? Oh, I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> it's, been one, it's been a long day. The, uh, Christmas. Yeah, Thanksgiving is well past us. It, this year just completely flew by. I can't believe it. So more wet weather there for the... Uh, Remainder of December for California. Looks like storm after storm coming in. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Quick glance here at the precipitation uh, total accumulated model runs here. Quite a bit of, bit of wet weather out there in the forecast. As you can see, not so much there across the desert southwest and the portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. But uh, they'll get their turn. I know right now, um, this most recent uh, storm systems out here in California completely relieved us from any drought that was starting to sneak back in, but uh, we're pretty good now. Pretty clear here in Northern California, with the exception down in the extreme Southern Cal. Um, and that's at the surface of all the uh, deeper regions, fairly good as well. Moisture anomaly, we're wet. Uh, the ground is soaked out here from top all the way down into the deeper level. Uh, below the ground here and that's uh that's good news a lot of moisture out here across california right now from uh all this these storm systems here um the east cleared up quite a bit i know this area was dealing with some uh drought conditions but it looks like things have filled in across idaho and wyoming montana uh, those areas that look like they need a little bit more rainfall Uh, which I'm sure it, it eventually fills in, right? All right, uh, I am out of here, folks. Real quick glance here at the uh, earthquake activity again. Uh, we'll definitely continue to watch that here. Check out the seismograph stations there. A little couple, two earthquakes there on the uh, Petrolia station. That Petrolia station is positioned right uh, uh, somewhere over here within this area. Dinsmore Station sits further back away from the coastline. So even though these two earthquakes are uh, localized, it didn't show up on the Dinsmore Station just because they're super tiny. Probably some microquakes there, but nothing uh, being reported there on the USGS map. Uh, aside from that, we'll just watch things here, folks, see how it goes. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning time. Congratulations there to the uh, two winners on the member drawing. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, it's up there on my live uh, videos. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning sometime. Stay safe.